Hey everybody, Dr. Retzik here with you. This is our second video in 16.4. Let's get started. So let's do an example. We're just going to compute something by way of Green's theorem. So here's our example. You got a 2D vector field. So big F depending on X and Y. Uh, first component x cubed y squared, second component, one half x to the fourth times y. Now, we're going to compute the counterclockwise circulation and the outward flux for this vector field over a certain curve. So the curve is here. This is the xy plane. Remember, 16.4 is all 2D. And there might be 3D versions of 16.4 beyond 16.4 in this chapter. But for us, all 2D in 16.4. Uh, the curve is this. I'll put the curve in red. The curve is this curve here. And it's being traced out counterclockwise. Uh, that parabola there, that's y equals x squared minus x. So opening upward and passing through the x-axis at the origin and also at x equals 1. And this spot here is 2, 2. Okay, so this is the setup. And we want to compute some line integrals of this vector field f around that curve. Now, the line integrals we're going to compute may or may not be 0. And so we want the option of computing these line integrals by way of Green's theorem. So let's talk about hypotheses first. Hypotheses. Uh, let's talk about the domain. In this problem, we can plug any x comma y we like into our vector field. So the domain is all of R2, which is surely open, connected, simply connected. It's everything you would want a domain to be. So that's good to know. Uh, now let's talk about the vector field itself on that domain. Uh, that vector field there, well, if you take partial derivatives of either component with respect to either variable, you will certainly have something that's still continuous. So this vector field is C1. Okay, and uh, let's talk about the curve C. The curve, well, let's see. It's piecewise smooth. Consists of two pieces linked up, both of which are smooth. What else? It's, uh, oh, simple. in that it doesn't cross itself. And it's a closed loop. As it starts at the origin and ends at the origin, if you like. The point of all of that is to conclude, therefore, Green's theorem Applies. So at this moment, we know if we want to, we can use Green's theorem. Okay, so now let's do the problems that we're being asked to do. Okay, so the first thing we're being asked to do is find the counterclockwise circulation. 
counterclockwise circulation. Okay, the meaning of the words counterclockwise circulation is this line integral. It's the line integral around the curve f dot dr. So this is good old f dot dr. We're trying to find the grand total contributions of the parts of the vector field f that are tangent to the curve, along the curve. So we're finding those components. That's why circulation. So we're trying to pick up the parts of f that point in the same direction of the curve at every part of the curve. Now, our other notation for that quantity, when you actually do out that dot product, f dot dr, well, it's f's first component, dx, plus f's second component, dy. And now by Green's theorem, you can trade that line integral around the boundary in for a double integral over the region R. So in that statement, the region R is here. This is R, all that is the region R. Now the thing that you integrate when you trade in for the double integral, so we're going from a chapter 16 problem to a chapter 15 problem. For f dot dr, we'll think of the two derivations with the little blue rectangle. This is circulation. This is around the curve. This is around the rectangle. So you're expecting this to have something to do with the circulation density. Okay, so when you're going around the blue rectangle, that derivation took us to dn dx take away dm dy. Okay, well, let's actually do the problem now. Uh, so, okay, we got to integrate in that region. So what, x goes 0 to 2, y goes bottom curve to top curve, uh, dn dx, okay, so n stands for the second entry in the vector field, and m stands for the first entry. So dn dx, that's a uh, 2x cubed y. Take away now dm dy. Oh, yes. 2x cubed y. All done in the order dy dx, you can see, comes out zero. So the counterclockwise circulation of this vector field around that curve is zero. Now, this surprises no one in light of section 16.3. Look, these match. Those came out the same in this problem. That is the component test. So the fact that that difference was zero means those two partials came out the same, and that's the component test. This vector field is conservative. So you are not at all surprised that the counterclockwise circulation around that closed curve is zero. Okay, from problem to problem, that won't be the case. Sometimes the vector field's conservative, sometimes it isn't. Now, the second thing we're being asked to do in this problem, in addition to computing the counterclockwise circulation, is to compute the outward flux. Outward flux is the next computation.
Now, outward flux, those words, they mean this integral. It's the counterclockwise integral around the curve of your vector field dot not dr, but rather dn. So this is integration with respect to outward pointing normals, not with respect to tangent vectors to the curve. Okay, so let's think about the outward pointing normals. So I always try to remember this like this. All right, so say you're on some part of some curve. Maybe the curve goes like that. If you're here on the curve, then your model for dr is dx dy. which means your model for dn, the outward pointing normal. Okay, look at that purple vector. Like I always have to do this every time for myself to try to remember this. You could just memorize it if you want, but I'm trying to remember this for like why dn means what we're about to write down. Okay, so look at that purple vector. Let's say that purple vector is um, negative 3, negative 1. What if that purple vector were the vector negative 3, negative 1? It looks like it could be. 3 to the left, 1 down. Then that red vector would be first entry, negative 1. So whatever the second entry of the purple vector is, that's the first entry of the red one. And then three up, so negative the first entry. Or thinking about another way, if the purple one is dx dy, then the red one has to be something that when you dot it with the purple one, you get zero, because they're perpendicular. So dy comma negative dx. That's how you get zero if you dot those two. You could also go negative dy comma dx, and that would be giving you the inward pointing normal. So you still have to keep track of which of those two to use. But one way or another, this little picture helps me remember that when we're doing f dot dn, we're really doing this. So it's f's first entry. First entry of the red plus f's second entry times second entry of the red, which is negative. So n dx. So this one is trying to pick up components of your vector field outwardly perpendicular pointing to the curve, which by Green's theorem, You are free to trade in for the double integral. Okay, now let's remember how this one goes. So this one is with respect to outward pointing across the boundary of the region. Think about the blue rectangles again. Which derivation was the one having to do with outward pointing across the blue boundary of the four edges of the rectangle? And if you recollect that derivation, dm dx plus dn dy is how all of that shook out. Which means if you want to do this problem, you double integrate over the region. Okay, so x ran 0 to 2, y ran bottom curve to top curve, dm dx. Okay, let's go find m and n again. There they are. So dm dx, 3x squared y squared.
plus dn dy one half x to the fourth. All done in the order dy dx. Okay, now, there's no reason to believe this one is going to come out zero. It certainly doesn't look algebraically like it will. I suppose by some miracle upon integration and plugging everything in, it could come out zero. If you do that first integral, then look where we are here. Uh, integral zero to two. Okay, now integrate with respect to y, so that's x squared y cubed. plus one half x to the fourth times y evaluated from y equals x squared minus x up to y equals x. Okay, so let's do one more line here. Zero to two. Okay, so you gotta stick in x everywhere you see a y. So you get x to the fifth plus one half x to the fifth. Take away, and then you gotta stick in x squared minus x everywhere you see a y. So x squared, x squared minus x all cubed, plus a half x to the fourth times x squared minus x. And all of this is still to be done dx. All right, well, there's no getting around it. You gotta foil all that stuff out. It's just powers of x really in the end, but uh, it took me like a, a page of algebra to foil all that out and then integrate that and then plug in zero to two. You guys can check my work. I got 64 over nine. It wasn't pretty, it wasn't rigged in any way to be uh, friendly in the computation. So I got 64 over 9. The point is this. Parametrizing those curves and turning the integrals into integrals dt might be as much work or more. And all Green's theorem does is give us an option for computing these two things, these physical quantities, this counterclockwise circulation around the curve, outward flux across the curve. If you have these line integrals and you prefer to do them by way of a double integral from chapter 15, feel free by Green's theorem as long as all the hypotheses are met. Okay, you guys are gonna practice going back and forth between line integrals and double integrals by way of Green's theorem. Come to class with questions, and we'll start to see in the last video uh, some other cool things you can do with Green's Theorem um, that can make some old problems shorter. All right, see you next time.